thank you for joining us for the first Uzoom of the 22-23 academic year. Um, just as a reminder, uh, we will kind of have some updates to share. Um, if you have some questions as we go through the updates, please share those in the chat. We'll try and answer any of those questions as we go through. Uh, we'll also try and leave some time at the end for um, question and answer. At that point, um, please feel free to unmute yourself at the end uh, so that you can ask those questions. Um, we will be recording this session. It's already recording so that we can post it later on YouTube uh, and share so that people can review um, at their will. Um, with that, I will hand it over to Dr. Dobson. Thank you, Jeremy. Good afternoon, everyone. It's uh, great to see you and to have seen so many of you over the last couple of weeks. Um, it's been uh, fantastic to be in the room with a lot of you. Hope you are doing well as we settle into the fall semester. Um, I have a series of updates, so I'm going to go kind of quick here, hopefully. Uh, first, I want to just update you on the progress on our education educational master plan, our EMP. Uh, the College Council did uh, vote to recommend our mission and vision statement, and some of you may be saying, didn't we do that last uh, spring? And the answer is yes, we did uh, go through the process to review and get feedback and identify a mission and vision statement, but because of the timing, College Council wasn't able to vote, so they did uh, hold their official vote at their meeting this week, and that mission and vision will move forward in our EMP. Uh, we're now working on our uh, work plan. So the EMP is a lot about what we're going to do, and we approved uh, through our participative governance process last spring uh, what we were going to do. So that was a two-page document essentially that identified specific outcomes we want to wanted to focus on in order for our institution to continue to be viable, but also for us to see an equitable increase in students' ability to access, uh, persist, retain, complete, and find career and transfer opportunities while they are here. So now we are working on the draft work plan, and that's the how we're going to do that, assigning sponsors to make sure that's going to move forward, identifying what those teams need to look like to make that work move that work move forward, et cetera. Uh, so that continues. Our hope is that uh, the EMP is going to get reviewed by the College Council this month and will go before the board for their approval at their October meeting. Uh, we are going to have a fire drill. So the uh, safety committee has been working for a while to um, reinvigorate our safety and security planning um, and how we respond in emergencies. And on November 7th in the morning, we will be holding a fire drill at both of our campuses, the Sutter Center and our Marysville campus as well. Um, our goal is to be is to communicate about this with everyone because we haven't done this in a while. Uh, because of COVID, we had so many of us off campus, we weren't continuing to rehearse those uh, emergency procedures and we wanna make sure that we get back in good practice. Uh, we're going to have a presentation at our October e our October Uzoom uh, that talks about the details about how we evacuate and where we meet during a fire drill. In later in October, our building POCs will have a training that identifies how they handle uh, responding in a fire drill, and then we will hold the fire drill in November. So I want to make sure that you've heard that. From us, we did start announcing that last spring, uh, but I, I know that some of us had a break for the summer and I wanna make sure we remember that is coming up so that we will continue to communicate so that students and employees will know how to respond on the 7th. Also this fall, we are going to be submitting our midterm accreditation report. The midterm accreditation report is pretty formulaic. It's a response specifically to the things that we said we were going to do. Uh, Jeremy, as our ALO, is working really hard on that. Uh, the Academic Senate is highly involved, of course, um, as is much of our participative governance uh, structure. And the board will review that report um, at our upcoming board meeting for future action. I wanted to just remind us that it is listed in the accreditation standards that is the responsibility of all of us 
to make sure that our institution is meeting what ACCJC has established as the standards for accreditation. So if you've not had a chance to read the midterm accreditation report, please do so. Our ICER, which is our uh, longer and more formal report, our self-evaluation is coming up much more quickly than we probably all expect. Uh, and so now's a good time to remind ourselves what the accreditation standards are and to make sure that we are actively moving in the direction of um, being compliant with the standards that have been put before us. Um, also wanted to let you know that the um, Pop of Praise program is back. Um, we did take just about a month and a half break during the summer, uh, but I did send out an email at the beginning of August that we were reopening that. Um, you should have seen an email from me recognizing all of the nominees. Thank you to so many of you, not only who are the nominees who did great things, but to those of you who take a few minutes out of your day to recognize someone for making a difference for you. The Pop of Praise program is fairly simple. You can go online to the survey link, uh, click on there and submit a fellow, a peer or a colleague uh, to thank them for something that made a difference for you that day. Uh, once a month, I download all of those nominations. I create an individual card for each nominee. Uh, we purchase most commonly a bookstore gift card for the nominees to go purchase something of their choice, uh, maybe a pop or a snack or something. Um, and I work with the administrative team to deliver them. It's just a chance for us to build community as an institution. Um, you will also see the pop of praise in our Yuba College monthly board report uh, to the trustees um, at our meeting tomorrow. Wanted to let you know that painting is going to resume um, at our Marysville campus. So uh, any day now we should start to see some activity uh, both from the contractor who had not yet finished all of their work, kind of on the front half of Marysville toward North Beale, and from the phase three project with a, uh, another contractor that's going to be working kind of on the back half of campus in the 1100, 1200 area, along with some additional items um, that were identified to paint as a part of the painting project. So that does mean that there will be some uh, tape and plastic sheeting that'll go out as they clean the buildings, and then some caution tape and signs for entering and exits, exiting the buildings. Um, just wanna remind you that sometimes progress is a little bit messy and the painters do move pretty fast. I know that we try and keep up with them to make sure that the signs are at the right place for where entrances and exits are so that no one gets painted on that day. Sometimes they move faster than the signs do. Uh, so we appreciate your patience and grace as we try and make sure that that project moves forward uh, and provide the least possible impact uh, to the instruction that's happening in those buildings. Um, but I'm thrilled to see the painting resume. I do expect that it will uh, finish this year. Um, in addition to the general painting, we are moving forward with our mural, which will start getting painted here in just a few weeks. Um, we've identified a contractor, uh, Rebecca Wallace, who is going to be um, finalizing that design and uh, moving in the direction of applying it to the theater. The design's not yet finished, so I do expect that you'll get to see a draft here in a few weeks um, and get, be given a chance for some quick feedback. Um, and I'm looking forward to seeing that bring a great deal of um, culture and community to our campus. I think it's going to be awesome to have that side of the theater um, be such a focal point for us. Last item uh, for this slide, I just want to mention that we are going to be installing a new electronic reader board. So at the Marysville campus, there is a reader, bo reader board in the entrance to the west parking lot. Um, and that reader board will remain, it will stay there, but we're going to be installing another one on North Beale Road facing the direction of the road so that people who are driving past in both directions will be able to read it. Um, that uh, installation should start at the end of September and finish sometime in October. It's a little bit of a longer project because they do have to run electricity and pour cement to create a foundation for the reader board. But I'm looking forward to that being out there so that we can communicate not only with employees and students, but also with people who are driving by, but what's happening at Yuba College. All right, next slide. 
And it's my privilege to recognize Christy Page today as our YC Proud Spotlight. Uh, Christy happens to work here in the building with me. So I know that I see her regularly with a smile on her face. Um, she's a consistent presence for us, uh, but she's also one of those people that looks for opportunities to uh, go above and beyond to support the college's work and our community. Um, Christy's a part of a team that's volunteering to plan trunk or treat this year, and that's something that I think most of us have come to expect of her. She's an incredible teammate who has been here for more than 10 years in a series of roles. Um, we're grateful to her for transitioning over to the real Yuba side, because if I remember correctly, she was a uh, DO employee technically before, uh, but thrilled to have her here and to thank her for everything that she does to make us proud. So Christy, congratulations and thank you for everything that you do. With that, we're going to transition to our Office of, the In Office of Instruction updates. And I think first up is Dean Dwayne Newman. Thank you, Dr. Dodson, and welcome everybody. Appreciate uh, you taking a few minutes of your day to keep up uh, with what's been going on at Yuba College and particularly in my division, the CTE and Workforce Development Division. The nature of this is uh, twofold. I wanted to do a little internal advertising and update everybody on what's been going on. So as you're reading this slide, I'll just give you a quick update on our activities. Like everyone else, we've been preparing and getting classes off the ground. Um, we also have uh, some internal accreditation visits with uh, different programs in our nursing and allied health department. Obviously, like everybody else, we're doing the, the course and program review updates. Those kinds of thing are, things are in the works and happening right now. I came on in mid-May, and since then, we've been working, the whole team has been working on um, making sure that our contacts with the community are solid and that uh, we're expanding those contacts because we're we're really focusing right now on building partnerships and building those relationships so we can improve our programs based on the needs from the different industries and we can increase student enrollment which obviously aligns with our district mission and vision um, and we're doing that obviously all um, with the idea of, of DEI and on that whole notion of diversity, equity, and inclusion, we're taking a special look at underserved populations and how to make sure that uh, uh, st potential students who typically might have been missed in marketing and advertising uh, are reached and um, enticed to join the Yuba College family. So we are doing a uh, preliminary look into uh, running a, a marketing program specifically on C CTE and workforce development. We've been in contact with a, a company to uh, utilize some of the um, advertisements that have already been created and do very specific marketing in terms of different age groups and different demographics. Um, and we're talking about potentially having them do some more, um, um, maybe more graphic kinds of uh, uh, advertisement slots so that it's more eye-catching. Um, and that's uh, that's been a big focus. We're also uh, recipients of a large grant called the Strong Workforce Program Grant. And we've been starting to talk about long-term spending of those grant monies and making sure that we do that strategically so that the spending aligns real tightly with our, our program and the college mission kinds of things. So if you want to go to the next slide, then uh, I think everybody generally knows what CTE is, right? Um, what I've realized uh, since I came on board is that a lot of the, the uh, public service folks who we really depend on in crisis are graduates of CTE programs, 70 percent of the firefighters, nurses, EMTs, police officers in the state of California go through a community college program. And we also need to make sure that folks understand that this isn't 
um, this isn't a second tier kind of operation. Our, our technology that we use in all these programs is the latest technology. I put a couple of images on there of CNC machines and a, and a welding robot. Um, and we also make it obviously a point to ensure that all of our programs are accessible to every student who wishes to be part of the program. So if you wanna to go to the next slide, I'll wrap up by saying, if you have family, friends, aunts, uncles, grandparents, nieces, nephews, students that are really looking to get into a career soon after um, high school graduation or later in life, whatever um, change might have come along that, that is enticing them to look at maybe a different pathway in their job, um, advocate for YC programs because we really have uh, an amazing number of different programs, everything from what you've seen to what's listed here, including, you know, kinesiology and athletics and early childhood education, all those. Um, and the last part of my commercial plug is um, the link on the slide will take you to the fall sports uh, schedule. Please come out and support our teams as they uh, start off the, the school year. All right, and I think at this point, I'm gonna, uh, do I pass it off to Dr. Bagley? Is that correct? There it Thank is. you, Dean Newman, appreciate you. Hey, good afternoon, everyone. It's great to be here for our first Zoom meeting of the year. Um, my primary thing is to introduce three new team members for the STEM and Social Sciences Division today, but uh, Dwayne did such a great job in his presentation. I think I might need to add a few more things about what's going on with STEM and Social Sciences. So. Uh, we have also, you know, starting the semester on a good note. Um, we have a new faculty member we're going to introduce pretty soon, Omar Sanchez on Ethnic Studies. But um, now it's time to get everything set up for, you know, upcoming evaluations and classes and just really excited about the dual enrollment program. So Christy, our acknowledge for doing such great work. So congratulations, Christy Page, um, you know, her son will be in this year's graduating class. So we have a fourth year uh, class going for Yuba City um, Unified Dual Enrollment with Yuba College. And so that's really exciting. And I want to thank Dwayne and his team. We have for the first time a public safety pathway in dual enrollment. And Dale Vogelsong and I just met with school district officials for um, doing fire science. So a lot of things happening behind the scenes with dual enrollment and the division. But let me go ahead and um, if you'd forward the slides, Jeremy, I'd appreciate it. Um, this is an exciting partnership with Yuba Water Agency. We have hired a long-term temp professor in earth science, um, Carmen Bowen. Um, many of you have heard that the Yuba Water Agency provided a very substantial grant to help us start a new program in watershed management um, that aligns closely with many things we already do from um, our AA our AST in environmental science is going to benefit from this. Um, our geography program, Corey Champ, is going to benefit from this. But um, Carmen's going to help us create this program in watershed management. She's been working at Yuba College for a while, as you've probably seen her on campus before. She's taught at many colleges in the region, has um, degrees in geology, geography, curriculum, and instruction. And she's recently been certified in geographic information systems, one of the key technologies that's kind of overlap in the career technical education, Dwayne, um, for um, this is really meant to two folds. Carmen's gonna help get curriculum going for students to go directly into the workforce and improve their wages directly with one certificate in one semester or for transfer degrees. Um, but here, just so you get the flavor for the great people we work for, the YC Proud. She enjoys travel and photography, beekeeping. So that's pretty neat. So uh, Carmen, we want to welcome you. Not sure if you're here today. Can anyone see? We got so many people here, 61 participants. Carmen, if you're there, you want? I invite you to just wave or say hello. Okay. If you can transfer us along, Jeremy, one more slide. I'm really excited to have um, Omar Sanchez join our team um, in ethnic studies. He's got his master's degree in Chicana, Chicano studies from California State University, Northridge. Um, comparative ethnic studies degree from Washington State. 
And you could tell he's very student-centered. He gave his quote here, his goal is to help students reach their goals. Born and raised in Tijuana, has lived in Washington and Los Angeles. Um, Omar um, loves riding bikes and um, music and traveling. So, but he is hitting the ground running too with the Ethnic Studies program. Want to tell students out there to watch your people. He's got two more late start ethnic studies courses online. Omar, are you in the audience? Do you want to say hello? Yes. Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you for the for the introduction. Uh, again, you know, I, I'm glad that you mentioned that we have a couple more classes coming in, uh, and I'm really really excited to to get those started. And I'm looking forward to working uh, uh, on those classes and meeting more students. Great to have you, Omar. Thank you. And Jeremy, if you'd take us to the third last newcomer to the division, um, Karina Gerla. She is our new biology laboratory technician, a very, very important position in the STEM and social science division. Um, she's a Uber College alum, which is pretty exciting. Um, a Chico graduate. And I think the one claim to fame, if Carrie Wassinger's here, um, she was a favorite student in Carrie Wassinger's <laughs> brother's biochemistry class at Chico State. It's a small world that we live here. Um, she's great with art, an animal lover, and a first generation college student. You know, parents were immigrants from Romania. And um, I hope you can welcome Karina. She's just doing a great job. We got some talented people. And, you know, we're looking forward to having a great um, semester in the STEM and social science division. And I need to introduce my colleague and friend, Dean Christina Benucci. Hello. Thank you, Michael. So I want to start um, tutoring, um, still have that. And so um, tutoring is going well. They've got um, tutoring starting at eight in the morning and we go till seven in the evening, Monday through Thursday. And then on Fridays, eight to 4 p.m. So on there, if you haven't been over to our centers, we have two here on the Marysville campus and one over at the Sutter. Um, and those individuals um, starting on the far left are Stephanie Bone and Charlene Christensen, Christian, sorry, um, over at the Sutter Center. Um, at the CSC are Quee and Riley, sorry, Quee Bui and Riley Hang. And then our Writing and Language Development Center, our newest addition is Starla Hagerman. Um, and we have Ron Moore. So please encourage your students to join sign up for services. Um, Stephanie let us know that of all of the students that received tutoring this summer for statistics, every single one of them passed. It wasn't huge numbers, but to say that everybody passed that received tutoring is pretty great. I think there was maybe 10 or 12 students. So absolutely wonderful. Please encourage your students to come over. Um, even if you are not necessarily a content area or you're like, I don't really know if my students have help, need help with it. If you are doing a lot of writing in your content areas, whether it's um, history or psychology, any of the social sciences, please refer them to the WLDC so that they can get help with that. Even if they don't need help in the content area themselves. Um, go ahead to the next slide. Um, I wanted to share with you things that we have coming up in our theater, music, and arts area. Um, the play for this year is Midsummer Night's Dream, and it will run October 20th through the 30th. It's two weeks, Thursday through Saturday. It'll be at 7 p.m. in the theater, and each Sunday will be a matinee at 2 o'clock. We have music recitals coming up. Um, we have the noon recitals on campus, um, one each month. We have a band and jazz concert scheduled um, for 11, sorry, November 4th and December 2nd. Both of those will be at 7.30. And then we have the choir and music ensembles, um, which will be in December at 7.30. Um, our art instructors are busy on campus and we've had them display their work in the library. So if you walk through, they've got some of their different sculptures currently housed in there um, and they're switching them out every couple of weeks since they have new things. They're just using the display cases as they're available. Um, we thought it would be nice to showcase them someplace central. And then we are planning an art show at the end of the semester. Um, so please keep an eye out for that. They don't have their dates set yet, 
as to when it will be, but it's usually the last two to three weeks of the semester that they have students start putting work up in the library. Um, I, shout out to all of the disciplines in my area. They have done an absolutely wonderful job. Um, my faculty, thank you so much for all the enrollment. Um, every single one of our departments is up in terms of enrollment this year. It's absolutely wonderful to see. And we actually, thank you, we didn't offer as many classes at the start, which means we didn't cancel as many classes. Um, and the students just absolutely filled them. And you guys were great at encouraging students to take the open sections rather than sit on the wait list. So I thank you for that. And our numbers look absolutely wonderful because of you. I'm gonna hand this off to Eric Burns. Hello, everybody. Uh, just a quick update on athletics, uh, piggybacking on uh, Dean Newman's uh, update. Um, athletics, we have scheduled events this week. So athletics is underway. It started uh, a couple weeks ago. Um, and in spite of the heat, we're, we're getting our activities in. Uh, we have volleyball this Friday at 6 p.m. And then also we have a home ball game uh, this Saturday, also at 6 p.m., trying to avoid the heat. Uh, if it's okay, can I um, can I drop a document in the chat? Is that allowed? I'll do it. Um, I'll do it as I'm finished here. Uh, so what I have is a, as a schedule of events, a calendar of events of home only sports for all the sports. I uh, would love to have our, our staff and faculty come out and support our student athletes. Uh, they're doing a great job. They're working hard. Um, but uh, also, if you're interested in having access to, there's an Outlook. I have an Outlook calendar. You can uh, email the uh, department here or, or me directly, and I'll share that calendar with anyone who's interested. Uh, and uh, that shows all of our home and away events, as well as anything else pertaining to student athletes, like our Hall of Fame or our student athlete orientation. Uh, again, I'll, I'll drop the um, home schedule or the home event schedule in the uh, chat here when I'm done. Uh, but also I have I have uh, full schedules for all the sports that are going on right now, which is football, volleyball and men's and women's soccer. Uh, basketball will be starting up uh, here in October. Uh, they'll start playing in, in November, actually. Uh, in the week of the September 19th, I will uh, run a, a new sport meeting. It's part of our Title IX compliance to make effort to measure and be aware of any unmet need uh, on the uh, on the athletic side uh, of what sports we should be offering or, or might need to offer uh, based on uh, having students that have that need, students that are uh, underrepresented, having that uh, unmet need met. Um, I would re remind our Faculty of Board Policy 4300, uh, 4300. That's actually Administrative Procedure 4300. It's the Transportation uh, Travel uh, Administrative Procedure. The student athletes are uh, protected from penalty for missing class and assignments due to athletic events, but they need to complete a form and provide you that form and communicate with you ahead of time for that protection for that protection, for that uh, accommodation. And so the student athletes are instructed to make sure they're being proactive in communicating with you all if they are going to um, potentially miss a class because they're getting on a bus to, to go participate in an athletic event. Uh, I will say that it's not always feasible for us to get that communication out early. Uh, for example, this week we uh, had a soccer game that was scheduled for 4 p.m. But because of the extreme heat, it was moved up to 10 a.m. It was moved up, uh, decided to move up uh, on Sunday of the weekend. And so communicating that or getting a hold of a faculty might have been uh, not simple to do. Uh, but those kinds of things are happening. And uh, your, your patience and your understanding as far as making sure student athletes are communicating and being diligent uh, with their schedule is appreciated. I uh, had plans for a merchandise store to be open. Right now I'm having an issue with our vendor, but um, we will get a merchandise store open and share it out broadly. For those of you who want to support the athletic programs, uh, not only monetarily, but also uh, in spirit and 
rocking your uh, 49er gear on campus or at our athletic event. Um, and then a couple of updates on some um, fundraisers. The baseball program is going to have a golf tournament on October 1st. And then the track and field program will also have a golf tournament on October 3rd, uh, which is a Monday. Uh, you can uh, reach out to the department office uh, for more details on either of those. So, uh, yeah, I uh, hope you all are willing and able to come out and support the team, uh, any of the teams. So next slide, please. Alumni and friends, just a real quick update. Uh, one of the activities that we have planned for fall is a tailgate party. We're going to have a tailgate party at the October 8th football game, the 1 p.m. game against San Jose City College. Uh, and so more details will come out uh, on that. Um, I don't have much details in the way of coming meetings, but I would invite any of you who are interested in participating, either being a member or participating on the committee, to reach out to myself or Zulema. Uh, and we can communicate our meeting times and in different um, activities you can participate in. Uh, on the Yuba College website at the top, there's a tab for alumni, and that'll take you to a link on how you can uh, participate on the committee, uh, how you can become a member, and, or even uh, if you have a project funding request. Uh, those of you in faculty that have clubs, engaged clubs, students engaged in your, in your uh, clubs, um, consider what sort of funding requests you might need uh, to help support those activities. And uh, again, the forms for that are on that website uh, linked at the main Yuba College website page. Uh, so I think that's it for me. I have the pleasure of introducing and to kicking this off to our new VP of Student Services, Dr. Tanya Teresh. Thank you so much, Eric, and thank you, everyone. I'm really happy to be at the very my very first U Zoom. This is my seventh work day at Yuba College, so I'm brand shiny new. And um, I want to thank everyone who's been so welcoming. Everyone I've met has just been such a great steward of um, campus spirit at Yuba College. In particular, I've spent a lot of time getting to know the Student Services Division, kind of those, in, those introductions. I've had tours of each office, including our um, Marysville campus and our Yuba County Center. Um, I also had an opportunity to start immersions um, in each office, and I've been to every office where we spent about two hours getting to a little bit more of a deep dive of each area, spending a little bit of time with some of the employees, sometimes at front desks, sometimes in counseling offices, uh, really to start to get a sense of the kind of work that we do here at Yuba College. And again, I can tell that everyone is so motivated in serving students. There's a real dedication to student success. So I'm just absolutely thrilled to join the team. Um, I am starting this week for kind of regular business, going to committee meetings and some college activities. And um, today I've had an opportunity to meet our partners at Woodland Community College. Um, so I really look forward to um, getting out there and um, getting to know um, many of you across the, the college. Um, and so because I'm new, I don't have any other particular updates to share with you directly, but I'm pleased to work with a fabulous group of directors that who will be sharing some individual updates about their areas through the rest of this process. Um, so I have the pleasure of introducing to you our ASYC president, Wendy um, Talia Faro. Thank you. Thank you all so much for this opportunity to speak. We're ecstatic to announce that we have the opportunity to extend our services to the Yuba College Sutter campus family. Um, we will be providing um, weekly office hours in the Sutter Center library. During office hours, stu students are able to come in and they will have the opportunity to learn about the services and programs that we provide at uh, Yuba College that may be available to them. We will assist them with locating resources that may help them to, uh, to get through day-to-day -day challenges that we saw quite a few of us have. Uh, we will also provide information uh, regarding different activities and events that we are planning, as well as those events that are going on around the campus. Uh, they can also have their Yuba College IDs made. Um, the Sutter campus um, office hours will be Tuesday from 10.30 to 1 o'clock p.m. and Thursday from 10.30 to 11.30 and also from 12 to 1. 
They will also have an uh, opportunity to attend weekly ASYC meetings. Then they have three options. They can join us from Zoom from the comfort of their own home. They can join us at Sutter Center um, uh, Zoom meeting, or they can join us in, per in person at our Marysville location at 2088 Northfield Road, Building 100A uh, and um, Room 4. Once again, thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak on behalf of ASYC's uh, student body. And we hope to see as many students as we can to make sure that, they, that we are doing our part to continue to help our students be as successful as possible. Hi everyone, so it's Liliana Becerra or Lily for short and thank you Wendy um, for sharing that and so I'm the message director and I just really want to start with saying thank you to my supporters and everyone who's been helping me, um, sending students my way, sharing the information, allowing me to present in the classrooms. I did a couple of those the first two weeks of school so that was an adventure to kind of be going to other classes so thank you so much for sharing. Please continue to share um so we have to offer that i'm still taking students so continue to share and so i'm still uh, we have the study center it's not fully ready but i have table and, i have some table and chairs um so students can come in I have a microwave and fridge um and some utensils they might need supplies so send them my way i'm working on college campus tours i'm working on uh leadership development opportunities professional developments and then hopefully slowly by students coming in, we get to build a campus community within here, Yuba College and the STEM fields. I've done a couple events already, um, which were very, I thought they were amazing. We got to connect with some of the students. So we did a MESA welcome event where I let the students bring either a loved one, family, some brought their moms, um, one brought the siblings and mom. And it was just really nice to connect with them. And then we did uh, like a recruitment kind of opportunity where we did coffee and donuts. I hope some of you came and enjoyed some coffee and donuts and it was for STEM faculty and STEM students. It was nice to see some interacting with the students and I got to meet um, some teachers myself. So it was nice, hopefully we get to do it again. So keep a lookout for different things that MESA is doing. And it's mostly for disadvantaged students that are in the STEM fields wanting to transfer out to a CSU or a UC. Some of the majors I listed on here are biology, chemistry, computer science, engineering, mathematics, physics, pre-dental, pre-med, pre-nursing. If you don't know and the student does say they want to do, a, they have like a certain, uh, I don't know, like job in mind, but not necessarily falling in this major, still send them my way. As, as the, the key piece is that they want to transfer out. Let me work with the student and we can decide the rest. There's different ways um, we can get them in. And if not, then I can figure out how I can still serve them or send them to the right place. So keep sending them over to me. I'm right by the bookstore. I'm no longer in the booms by the 700. I'm now in the 300 right across from the cafeteria. So um, stop by. We can chat. You can email me. My email is on here. Um, if you would like me to go present in your class, let me know. Um, and we can figure out how we can work together. But yeah, that's all I got from Mesa. Thank you. And next up is Chris. <laughs> Thank you, Ali. So one of the first things I wanna do is to remind everyone that we have College Information Day uh, coming up on Thursday, September the 22nd. We haven't had a College Information Day on campus in two years, so we're really, really excited to be working with our community, um, inviting our high schools, but we also do not wanna forget our students that are on campus. I encourage you um, all faculty to please um, encourage your students to attend. Um, if you'd like additional information, please email me. If you'd like to um, table and are not sure what you need to do, you can email me and I would be more than happy to send you the information. So we're excited. We're expecting between, I would say 700 to 1000 high school students. That doesn't include the number of students that will be here on campus from our classes here on campus. So um, please join us on College Information Day. It's going to be a great day where we see all these students looking at all of our programs here on campus. Eric, next, I mean, thank you, Jeremy. So counseling department, um, these are some of the words that come to mind when I think about a counselor. And I want you to know that your students to please encourage your students to schedule a counseling appointment. They can um, schedule a counseling appointment by calling 
um, by attending the virtual Zoom room, or they can also schedule an ESARS appointment. I just want to make sure to emphasize that we are going to be having Saturday, September the 17th counseling appointments from 9 to 3 p.m. They can either be face-to-face -face or they can be on telephone or they can be Zoom. But the most important thing is please encourage your students to schedule appointments to meet with a counselor so that they can start being prepared and develop a pathway to their educational goal and be ready, especially for the spring semester, um, so that we can avoid the rush at the last minute. So please encourage your students to schedule a counseling appointment. And I will pass uh, it on to Marcy. Hi, everyone. Happy fall semester. Um, we just want to take this opportunity to remind our faculty to please encourage students with disabilities to contact our office to request um, accommodations for the semester. Students often forget that they need to reach out to us to get the process started, um, especially if they're fresh out of high school and are used to having their accommodations carried over automatically. Um, we cannot send notifications to you unless we receive specific permission from the students to do so each semester. So um, your assistance could help eliminate delays in getting students the supports that they need um, that help with their achievement. If you haven't already made an announcement from your podiums, please consider starting your next lectures with a general reminder. Um, and then I just wanted to touch on um, the accommodations that a student receives are tied directly to the limitations of their specific disability. And the accommodations listed here are a few of the most common because they help to remediate barriers imposed by many of the various disability categories. For example, um, a student could qualify for shared notes in a class if they have a learning disability that creates a processing challenge, making it difficult for them to transfer what they hear to written notes for studying later. A student with ADHD could qualify if they have trouble maintaining sufficient focus on what the instructor is saying during a lecture. A student with a mental health disorder like depression could be struggling to stay awake from lack of sleep or experiencing loss of concentration while trying to stave off other distracting thoughts. The list of examples could go on, but as you can see, each of these students is at risk of missing critical points in a lecture and would benefit from the shared notes accommodation. The same can be said for test accommodations and for the provision of alternate formats for the delivery of course information. So I know that keeping track of student accommodations can be troublesome and annoying, um, and that we've been promising an electronic disability management system that would alleviate much of your headache and ours. Um, but with IT fighting to keep other campus systems up and running and experiencing vacancies in numerous positions within their department, they haven't been able to complete the work needed for our software to be implemented. Um, so in the meantime, you can expect to continue to receive test accommodation requests and letters of academic accommodation forms from us um, that outline the supports that the students need. Uh, please feel free to reach out to us with any questions or concerns that may come up. Um, and we continue to be grateful for the privilege of working alongside you in service to our students. And that's it for DSPS. And now I would like to turn it over to Jennifer Mahler in Admissions and Records. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, we don't have much of a department update. So I wanted to remind everybody of some upcoming dates for uh, the fall semester. And so the next upcoming date is um, students have until the 16th to elect the pass no pass grading option. After that, they won't be able to change their grading option. Um, November 10th is the last day to drop with a W. And believe it or not, spring 2023 registration is opening in a couple months. So um, we are all getting ready for that. And um, if your students are planning on graduating, we do have the deadline of November 15th for fall graduation, but we encourage them to petition to graduate as soon as possible if they know they'll be finishing. Um, that way they get it in. We have a record of it and there is uh, no last minute 
panic to get their um, petitions in. And um, then we go into the end of the semester and uh, early reminder, and I'm sure um, instructors, you're gonna get reminders as we get closer that final gr grades will be due on December 21st. So as always, we appreciate when grades are submitted as soon as possible after the term ends so we can finish our end of term processing. I know it's very early to be talking about it, but believe it or not, time's gonna fly and it's gonna be the end of the term before we know it. And um, with that, I'm going to turn it over to Martine. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here with you. Uh, today, I'm here to ask for your assistance with uh, some important information for our students. Uh, the 22-23 uh, FASF application and or the DREAMAC, uh, California DREAMAC application are still available for this fall semester. There's still students enrolled who haven't completed either of those applications. So one of the best ways I think that we can reach out to those students is through your classroom. So you can announce it to, to your students and let them know if they haven't applied yet, there's still time for them to get an application submitted for the 22-23 academic year. Also, we wanna start advertising that the 23-24 FAFSA or California Dream Act application will be available on October 1st for the next school year. Uh, we encourage students to fill it uh, as soon as possible to, to meet uh, certain deadlines like the March 2nd deadline for, for this, to see if students qualify for the state Cal grants. And so please also share that information with your students. Uh, one thing about financial aid that, uh, that we also need your assistance is uh, with the steps to applying for financial aid. Uh, the majority of the time, the students just do a step one, which is completing the financial aid application. Uh, they automatically assume everything is done and complete because they submitted it. However, some of the students may be selected for an additional steps or requirements. And this is where step two comes in. Uh, students can go into their uh, financial aid self-service account and they will automatically know what information is needed from them to be able to, uh, to have their file completed. Okay, so we, we encourage students to make sure to follow up with uh, self-service. Step three is about uh, Selecting a refund preference. Uh, you, Duba College and also the district, we have a contract with uh, Bank Mobile uh, and this company uh, assists us in dispersing financial aid to students. Uh, the majority of the time, the students also forget about this, this step. Okay? And, and so it is very important for them to go to step three. And the two, two options that the students have is they can opt to have a direct deposit to a personal bank account if they already have one. There's no charges, uh, just a free deposit into their personal bank account. If they don't have a bank account, they can opt to open a bank mobile vibe account in which bank mobile will issue a debit card, which students can use to purchase their books, supplies, anything that they might need uh, for, their, uh, for their education. Uh, we have experienced this with some of the students this fall semester. They've been waiting for their financial aid. And one of the things that it is holding up is that they don't have a bank mobile refund preference. So please help us share this information with the students. And step four, which is I think is also very important. Uh, as students, when they start receiving financial aid, they, they start with a satisfactory academic status, uh, completely fine. Uh, if the students don't do well in classes and by not doing well is either not maintaining a 2.0 GPA or not completing at least 67% of the units they attempted, the students will go into a warning status. A warning status does not affect eligibility for the following term, but if this uh, uh, not maintaining satisfactory academic progress happens again for the, for the next term, the student's financial aid eligibility gets terminated and the students will be required to go through an appeal process, which it may delay a little bit more uh, receiving financial aid for the next academic year. Okay. Uh, the last thing that I have here is federal work study. Uh, our department receives federal funds uh, to, to employ students on campus. And we have had a, a few students coming into our department looking for a job. 
But in order for us to place the students on campus, we need your assistance. If you need any help, any student help in your department, we have funds available to employ students through the Federal, Federal Work Study Program. Um, students are subject to 20 hours uh, per week. This is by HR requirements. Uh, in addition to that, they must have a fast on file. They must demonstrate need. Um, and then they have to be enrolled at least half time and also maintaining satisfactory academic progress. So if your department is interested in, again, in employing uh, work study students, uh, please reach out to Ryan Gorgon. His email is in the, uh, in the slide and he will make a note that your department is in need of students. And as soon as we get students in our department interested, we will uh, arrange a contact so that you can decide if you wanna uh, give the student an opportunity to work on your department. And I think that's it for me. I believe the next I will, is gonna be an uh, academic senate update. Hi, uh, yes, thank you. And I'm gonna keep this really quick in the interest of time to allow time for questions at the end. I just wanna, first of all, welcome to the new folks. I look forward to working with you. I say congratulations to Christy Page. I can't think of anybody more deserving of the spotlight. Um, I just wanted to mention really quick that we are still meeting at our traditional academic Senate time, which is Thursdays from 12 to one. And the meetings are open to anyone and everyone. Um, we're doing a hybrid model right now where we have Zoom or um, on campus we're in I think it's room four um, across from the near the president and vice president office. Um, I encourage anybody who is, has an interest at all to, to come to our meetings. Um, then the only other thing that I wanted to say, if we could go to the next slide really quick. Um, the 10 plus one, if you haven't heard of it, it's what uh, gives the academic senate the role in the participatory governance process. And so I just wanted to highlight, these are the things um, that we have agreed upon, we have a, uh, working with the Board of Trustees, the top three we've, we've agreed on that they rely primarily upon the Academic Senate for guidance. Um, and then the last four plus the, the from four on to the plus one, um, we mutually agree on. And so that's where we work with the administration and the Board of Trustees to come up with solutions um, to issues that we both agree with. Um, and that's really all I had today. I hope everybody is surviving the tremendous heat. Um, I'm kind of surviving it. Um, and with that, I'll move on to the next person. Thank you. I don't know that we have anyone from IT. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. If someone is from IT, please speak up. But we do have someone from MNO. Uh, David Willis, do you have anything to share? For some reason, we still can't hear you. I saw that you unmuted, but. Uh, can you hear me now? Yes. OK, very good. So thank you for the opportunity. I, I don't have anything prepared, but I can share that uh, a few things about project work that's um, being done. Uh, in brevity, uh, the fire alarm systems project's about 80% complete. And <clears throat> uh, we've been delayed due to some supply chain issues in getting the emergency uh, messaging devices, which uh, has actually uh, delayed that component of the project until March 16th, 2023. Um, other than that, we'll be uh, doing some uh, we'll be pulling underground new fiber uh, optic cable between the buildings, likely late November, early December, and connecting all the buildings into one uh, holistic system. Uh, there are all the buildings included in the scope, and then we'll also be um, continuing some of the programming, but all the buildings have a functional fire alarm system that meets codes right now, and we're just wrapping up some some uh, loose ends on the existing scope um, other than the emergency messaging system work. Um, so we're getting a more defined schedule from the contractor right now. And, and uh, we also have an RFP or a, a project that's going to uh, repair the ceilings in some of the buildings. Um, where we've had to remove the ceiling to install conduit and uh, that actually bids um, I have bids coming in on the 13th of September, 
and then we'll be uh, awarding that soon and getting that work started. Uh, building 800 modernization, and of course, I want to mention that was a 80% state match project. Uh, budget's two million four hundred ninety-four thousand on that project. The building eight hundred project is also eighty percent state match, four million nine hundred fifteen thousand dollar project. The design is approved from DSA. It's going to the board tomorrow for approval of the working drawings package, and it'll go to the state chancellor's office and the Department of Finance uh, for their approvals. And once we get those involved for the uh, construction scheduled on that project to start likely in Jan early January, sometime in January, and then continued into early October of 23. Um, and we've been, I've been coordinating very closely with President Dotson and her team uh, to, um, to get the work done so it's least impactful to instruction. Um, class, most of the work will be done next summer. Uh, in building 800. Um, classrooms and restrooms projects also under design. Um, actually um, started some of the, uh, the field work to investigate the buildings um, and, and do a topography uh, survey. That's a $9 million project. And we'll be submitting, or actually scheduling some uh, meetings with uh, the project user groups um, uh, this fall. So uh, the building three out uh, of phase three painting projects uh, uh, has been awarded to Polychrome Construction. They're gonna start work actually this week, later this week on, on Thursday or Friday of this week. And then continue on through September and, and into October. They'll be painting buildings, a couple of panels on 400 building, which is the theater uh, the middle, the building 900 in the middle of the campus, which is utilities building, uh, building 1100, which is the library, and 1200, which is the physical education building, um, with the gym, and, 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 the, and then a 2100 fire tower, farmhouse building, and several storage containers. Uh, the work has to be done by November 4th, or there's other things that will take place, uh, liquidated damages. Uh, phase one painting projects were wrapping up the punch list stuff and the same with repairs. There's this, we've been allocated $6,002,040 for uh, scheduled maintenance projects. And, and that preliminary list has been submitted to the college for, for two, actually to President Dotson for, for review and, and consideration. Um, so that's going through the governance process. Um, the monument site project has been mentioned, um, scheduled um, to all be completed by uh, early, uh, by the 11th of October. And so we'll be starting work uh, in, uh, let's see, the first day would be 21st uh, at the Sutter campus and then uh, at, at 26 at the parking lot monument site of September and the 29th at the uh, front uh, new monument sign on the campus. Um, and we have a couple other smaller projects that are also uh, being planned. So it kind of summarizes the projects. Um, they were working really hard to keep, Brian's been working very hard to keep the air conditioning systems operational. We had a few problems at 2100 building. And we received word today that um, it's not a fire alarm system integration problem, um, which we thought it would be or was because it happened at the same time, but it's an HVAC problem. So we're working on that to get the, uh, the airflow uh, where it should be. So are there any questions? Thank you, David. That brings us to general q and I recognize that it is five o'clock. Um, so Thank you all for being here. If there are general questions, uh, we'll try and stay for a couple of minutes. I see, Greg, you did have a question about IT staffing. Uh, we'll see if IT is able to come and speak to their project list um, at a future UZoom and talk about uh, kind of how they're working through their current staffing. 
Well, Jeremy, and just to follow up on my previous question that Anna responded to, if financial aid could put together, a, even if it's just a quick uh, questions and answers for what's most relevant right now, I would really be happy to put that on my Canvas site. And if I were in the classroom, um, hand it out or tell them about it, show it to them. But I don't understand the things, even looking at the website, I don't understand what I need my students to know right now, right? So um, Martine, if you could find a way to have something that um, that we can easily distribute, I'd be really happy to do it. I just don't feel qualified to say, hey, there's a stuff about financial aid and then my I would fall apart after that, so. Yeah, we'll be happy to put something together for you and for the rest of the faculty. Thank you, Martin. If there are no other questions, have a great day, stay cool as much as you can and talk to you all later. <laughs>